there's a modern day obsession with swing overhauls, increasing speeds, and optimizing trackman numbers. And there's a place for that, especially if you're trying to make the tour. But for the rest of us, golf is not a game of perfect. And for the most part, we work with what we have. Oh my. In my case, what I have is a snap hook on occasion. Oh my. But rather than performing a wholesale swing overhaul, I saw my coach for a swing tweak. All right, there's thousands of things that we can potentially change with setup and swing to make gains. And Adam, what did we do? We went from here to about here. We made a minor grip and setup change, and off I went. And now, we're putting these changes to the test at a challenging, world-renowned course, the Bay Course at Kapalua and Maui. And the first swing of the day is just fine. Indeed. Harnessing the ability to just keep the ball in play trumps squeezing an extra few yards out of your driver. Not to mention taking an extra club for your first few swings of the day, especially when playing into elevated greens. And here, I make a routine par. On the subject of making gains, I think it's worth emphasizing where the majority of our strokes come. It's not on approach shots like this one. It's actually greenside. This is a beautiful green complex, and the pin was tucked in the back left, Middle of the green might have been a better target for me, and now I'm putting from just off the green. These are where the majority of our strokes are taken, and misreading this putt leaves me with about 7 feet for par. I'm not able to make it, and I'm forced to card a bogey. Fortunately, the driver is still cooperating, and I put it right into position here on this long par 4. So this is 182 playing 169. My bunty iron swing is in full effect here, and in this case, it's enough to get it to the front of the green. And a lot of you have asked about my putting routine. There's not a whole lot to it. I always make sure to walk the putt from the hole back like I did here. And for more on this, check out the video linked in the corner to my full putting video with Golf Sidekick. That's a great putt, Adam. Wow! What a putt. That was Thanks. a great putt. I also don't take these little four or five footers for granted. I see a lot of amateurs scrape these away or just take them for granted. I always settle myself before taking one last look at the hole and here I'm able to knock it in for par. Once again, the focus is just getting the ball in play here, and drawing one up the left opens up the hole and allows me plenty of margin for error when I grab my fairway wood into this uphill approach shot. I try to remember that any reasonable tee shot on a par 5 leaves me with just a short par 4, and here my approach with the wedge leaves me with an uphiller for birdie. I leave it a bit short, but I'm able to knock in another par. Not every drive is going to be a beauty, this one is flared out to the right, and now with the ball above my feet, I don't put a great strike on this 5-iron, and for the first time today, I won't have a birdie putt. I will have another fabulous view here at Kapalua, who were kind enough to host me today. And camera angles can be deceiving. I thought I hit a good chip here, and from this angle it looks close, but it's actually left at 8 or 9 feet. I don't quite get this one to go, and we'll settle for another bogey. One thing we haven't talked about yet is managing expectations. From 175 to 200 yards, tour players only hit the green 53% of the time. So I know that I'm in for a rough one on this long par 3. That's a really good putt. I'm able to get out of the bunker and have a look at par, but I don't quite make it, and we're on a bogey train now. Oh no. In hindsight, this might not have been a driver hole. There's bunkers up the right, and look where this one winds up. I have a really awkward stance here with the ball above my feet in the bunker. I look to the front left part of the green, and I'm actually thrilled with getting this one close. But I'll have another tough putt from off the green. And like we've already discussed, the majority of our strokes take place here. I misjudged the long lag putt, Boy. and I got way too aggressive with this one. And lo and behold, now I'll have a tough look at bogey, but I'm lucky to make it. It's easy to get frustrated when on a bogey train but I try to wipe my memory clean before each shot. And here on the short eighth, I take extra club into the uphill approach shot and do manage to find the green. My read on this birdie putt is a bit off, but the distance control is fine, and we'll cart a par heading into nine. This is a long par five, but downhill, downwind, it manages to go a mile. 216 playing 205. This downhiller is into wind, and I'm just trying to muscle one up close to the front of the green. It's right on line and will actually leave me with an eagle putt from just off the green. Another misread leads to a testy one for birdie, but I knock it in. 
And that's a front nine I'm pretty content with. I didn't manage to scramble when missing greens, but any time that I limit the damage to just bogeys, and I hit only a handful of poor shots, I'm satisfied. The birdie on nine helped me break 40, and I'll hope I can keep it going on the back. Split fairway hole. You can see something kind of navigating up the middle. That's where you don't want to be. So I think I'm going to go right. Get used to seeing that tee. It comes right at the camera. And in any event, that was a good drive. Another uphill approach now. And this one's online, and it will leave me a 25-foot uphiller for birdie. Steve likes it. That's the right speed. That's a great putt. And any time I can begin a nine with a fairway in regulation, green in regulation, two putt par, I'm happy. Wind is becoming a factor on this back nine. I have the volume of it turned down, but I had to grab a 190 club for this 170 shot. It proved to be the right club, and the birdie putt, though a bit tentative, gets close, and I'm definitely happy with a par here as well. But nothing gold can stay. This drive required hitting it up a narrow shoot, and look at the trouble I get into by missing this tee shot. I'm trying to hack this one back to the fairway, and it goes all the way to the other side. Yeah, this hole is definitely becoming a hack fest. And this is actually my worst shot on the hole. Look how far away it winds up. Long putt. My ball is here somewhere. But once again, I'll take a long look at the putt. I stand up here, trying to find the spot where I want the ball to crest. Wow, that's a great putt. What a putt. And once again, Steve is impressed with it. That's an incredible putt. Thank you. And I'm thrilled to get away from this hole, hacking it around, and getting away with a bogey. This is a much better drive than the one I flared on the last hole, but unfortunately it winds up in a fairway bunker, where an ambitious club selection leads to not the greatest of shots. I catch it fat, but nonetheless I'll have a short iron in. And this one winds up above the hole, where I'll have a really fast downhiller for birdie. As usual, I'm focusing on die speed on these, and even though the read is off, it's close enough that I'll tap it in for par. Bad shot alert. Not that far, oh, no. right? Add up! There's my one big driver miss of the day, and while you watch me re-tee, I want to talk about Swing Tweaks, the only golf industry sponsor I've taken on the channel. It's awesome to see so many of you using it, and I want to share some of the feedback that you've sent. Alex said, I knew what my miss was, but without the video analysis breakdown, I never would have realized what the root cause was. And Jeremy said, I never would have discovered this problem on my own. After seeing the result of specialized professional help, it's made me realize that I need to put my pride away and do what it actually takes to get better. Thank you so much. And now it's my turn. Thanks to you guys, Swing Tweaks is doing an awesome giveaway that I'll discuss at the end of today's video. In case it wasn't evident, I actually made a triple on the last hole, and it's followed by a 210 yard par 3 into wind. I did a good job just getting this one on the green, but here I didn't go through my routine that I had been doing all day. I didn't walk the putt, and I left the long lag putt a good 15 or 20 feet short, and it leads to a very avoidable bogey. No bother. On to the most beautiful stretch of this golf course, where here I opt to hit a 5 wood because the fairway runs out on the right. I'll have a long way home here, and this isn't the best contact, and I'll have a long putt from off the green. I mentioned that this is where the majority of strokes take place, and this putt is going to leave me a tester for par. It's not a bad backdrop, and I'd love to make this one, but it misses just a bit high, and after going only 4 over through 13, I'm now 5 over in the last 3 holes. But let's reset. I'm not a scratch golfer, and bad stretches are going to happen. Like I said, we wipe the slate clean before each shot, and it's imperative to do that here. This next hole is Maui's only par 3 over water, and playing it close to 200 yards, it will call on me to hit a solid hybrid. And lucky enough, that's exactly what I do here. It leaves me just off the back right of the green, and how's this for another beautiful, beautiful backdrop? The birdie putt comes up a bit short, and after missing quite a few in the last few holes, it feels great to knock that one in. And Kapalua ends with another par 5. This one should be gettable if I can put this one in the fairway, but unfortunately it's in a fairway bunker. I definitely hit this one better than the last one out of a fairway bunker, and I'll have just a wedge in. I thought this one was all over the flagstick, but it misses a hair long, and I'll have another tricky downhiller. That's a bad, bad read. But it is the right distance, and I'll close with a par here on 18. 
And as you see these stats here, I want to mention Swing Tweaks giveaway. Like I mentioned, so many of you have signed up for Swing Tweaks, and it's awesome to see that it's helping many of you level up. There's no better testament than word of mouth referrals, and Swing Tweaks is rewarding whoever refers the most golfers to start using the app with the free Callaway Paradigm driver. And you can find the details of the giveaway in the description below.